somebody who isn't unemployed, but seems to be from the noise, it seems to be the leading contender amongst all of this is Tim Steiden, um, currently employed at West Ham, of course, having left by Leverkusen for that role, not to, not even 12 months ago, I don't think. Um, hired Zabi Alonso at Bayer Leverkusen. There's one uh, interesting angle amongst all of this. Some good signings, decent track record as well. What do you make of the links to him? And I guess what do you make of his um, his job, essentially, so far? Yeah, very, very exciting, to be honest. I think he's done I think he's done an excellent job at West Ham. It is a shame that they only hired him, I think it was halfway through the transfer window in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was loads of reports that him and Moyes weren't necessarily seeing eye to eye in terms of their transfer targets. But it looks like from the squad that they built that he really got his way. They were quite un-Moyes players, lots of the players that they signed, not necessarily purely based on sort of physical counter-attacking football. You know, Ahmed Kudus is an excellent creative presence. Edson Alvarez uh, was, you know, highly thought of for for years now. Um, And, you know, James Ward-Price, actually Ward-Price is more so in a Moyes mould with that set-piece sort of ability. Um, But yeah, as I say, was linked with, you know, Liverpool last year, um, Mm. but ended up at West Ham, and he'd been in charge of Bayer Leverkusen's recruitment strategy for a number of years and had excelled in Germany before that at Werder Bremen as well. He was the guy that gave Serge Gnabry another chance, having had a difficult spell at Arsenal. He was the guy that gave Kevin De Bruyne a chance at Werder Bremen on loan after a difficult spell at Chelsea. In terms of his work at Bayer Leverkusen, Moussa Diaby arrived on his on his watch, Jeremy Frimpong, Florian Verts. He managed to pilfer from Cologne just down the road as well from Cologne's academy. And West Ham's recruitment in the years leaving, leading up to his arrival had been a bit of a mess. Like they missed out on a number of players the summer before he arrived, including Zielinski, um, Amadou Onana, who's at Everton now, Matthias Nunes, who's now at Man City. But it felt like this summer they had the Declan Rice money and he had huge pressure on him. I think when you sell probably the best player in your modern history, you know, there was the potential for West Ham to really regress. And they spent a lot of last year, people forget, a lot of last year battling relegation. And, you know, the success in the Conference League sort of covered up really what was quite a difficult, you know, league campaign. So there was huge pressure there. And I just think they've done really, really well this year. Um, They're now seventh as we record this. They're 10 points off the top four. They've won five of their six Europa League games. They're into the knockouts. This time last year, they were 17th. They were two points clear of relegation. And those new players that I mentioned, particularly Ward Price, particularly Kudus, have had a massive, massive impact. Um, And yeah, like all these technical directors or sporting directors we're talking about where he's known as like a meticulous, meticulous and very like sophisticated operator, leaving no stone unturned whatsoever. And yeah, some of the players that he signed at Bayer Leverkusen, even I mean, mentioned some of the bigger ones, but he signed from really interesting places as well. You know, uh, Vittorio Di Guimaraes, the Portuguese side, he signed Edmund Tapsoba, who was linked with Spurs in the summer. Ezekiel Palacios signed from River Plate after a handful of games. Uh, Piero Hincape from Ecuador, Independiente de, de la Valle. So he's not afraid to look further afield for, for top signings. I like the fact that if you're bringing in Xabi Alonso, which I think is Liverpool's first choice and probably the, the, the managerial appointment that makes most sense at the moment, then it's nice to have someone who's worked with him before um, and you know gave him his chance at Leverkusen, his first senior management role. That seems like the dream, the dream setup. But having said that, I don't know how difficult or easy it's going to be to get him out of his West Ham contract. If you can't get Steiton, I think Paul Mitchell's the obvious choice. And there's also an element of, you know, a, a, a previous established relationship, I think, is really positive. But at mm. the same time, you kind of need your technical director not to be tied too heavily to the manager, because in many ways, you want your your recruitment strategy not to be tied to one manager. You know, you've seen at United over the last 18 months, two years, how many Eric Ten Hag signings have come in. And it's clear that they've got no structure around him. And some of the players have been a success, like Lissandro Martinez, mm. but some of the others, like Anthony, they just haven't they haven't hit the ground running whatsoever, um, to say the least. And Liverpool have, you know, operate in a completely different sphere to Man United, you know, in terms of recruitment. They are so much smarter. But at the same time, I don't think it's a disaster to not get the sporting director that's worked with the manager before. But having said that, I think he would be my first choice. Having, you know, after that, Paul Mitchell. 
Interesting. Okay, yeah, and I think you're right. By the way, that having that balance between a good working relationship and not necessarily being too closely tied together is absolutely imperative. And FSG will have to manoeuvre the way around that carefully. And um, I was going to ask you for your actual choice, but before I do that, and before we get sort of the definitive answer on that, any other names you think that we haven't mentioned? I've seen the likes of Marco Nepp left by Munich recently. Uh, Marcus Kroos is a name that's called before. Before we appointed Jörg Schmadke, I did a couple of uh, conversations with some people in Germany about him. He's very highly regarded Christoph Freund is a mention I, a name I see mentioned this morning as well is anybody else you'd add to that list yeah Christoph Freund is very tied to the RB Leipzig or the Red Bull model uh, the Red Bull clubs that's that's a potentially interesting one I think the the probably the outstanding candidate in in England is probably Dan Ashworth um, at Newcastle as well I know that the Newcastle project you know they're, they're having some difficulties in terms of balancing against the Premier League's PSR rules. But Dan Ashworth, his work at West Brom, his work at the you know at England with the FA in terms of building a culture there and putting the right things in place, and his work at Newcastle, you know, I think you know, yes, he has got a lot of money behind him. But the the sort of players that they targeted and the players they managed to land, you know, the Alexander Isaks, the Bruno Guimaraes, the Sven Botmans, you know, these are really exciting young players that Liverpool should be looking to, to sign as well because, you know, you're not necessarily, you know, as a club like Liverpool, I think you can throw your hat and you can definitely sign players that are wanted by other top clubs. There's no doubt about that. But I think Liverpool's real strength in the Klopp era was actually kind of creating superstars. You know, Sadio Mane was a big name before he arrived at Liverpool, but went on to superstar status. Same with Andy Robertson, you know, Gini Van Alden, for example. Like these are players that were, were ready to take the next step. And I think Liverpool have, a, have an ability to really develop and nurture talent. Um, and I think Dan Ashworth would be crucial at sort of pinpointing the best, best players in England and also the best young players from abroad. So he's definitely one I'd consider. Okay, interesting. Yeah, any thoughts on um, Richard Hughes then in that case? Because he's another name at Bournemouth at the moment. Seems to be doing a decent job down there. He's been linked a couple of times. Would he fit into a similar sort of category in terms of that? Yeah, maybe. I do think it's slightly different buying for Bournemouth than than Liverpool. You know, having not had an experience at a, at a really top club, but then at the same time, you know, it's worth it's worth keeping these guys in the hat. I think some of the the Bournemouth signings in the last two three years have been really really impressive. You know, Justin Cliver has made a big difference to them. They've kind of restructured their side this year around Ryan Christie playing in midfield. I think that's gone down really well as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the the football that Andoni Iraiola wants to play isn't totally dissimilar from, from a Klopp style. It's very based around high pressing. Obviously, they have a lot less possession than Liverpool and it's probably not as multifaceted in, in the way it can control games as well. Um, so that's definitely someone to consider. But I think I still think Dan Ashworth is probably the Premier League best pick. Okay, interesting then. Just finally then, on best picks, we mentioned just how big a job it is. Like Liverpool have been taken onto a new stratosphere essentially by Jurgen Klopp with some help along the way from Michael Edwards, Julian Ward, Jörg Schmadke more recently. It's a job of immense magnitude. There's going to be a big to-do list whoever does walk into the role at Anfield. But you mentioned it a moment ago. Would your pick out of all these names, would it be Tim Steiden? Yeah, I think so. I think it probably would be. He'd be the dream appointment. But I think Paul Mitchell is not far behind second. And the fact that he's out of work at the moment, it might just be easier easier to do. Um, and I, it is interesting with the sporting director at Liverpool, because obviously Michael Edwards was so long established and that system in place that he built, you know, carried you through what has been a, what's been a difficult period, really, in terms of sporting directors. I think whoever's appointment, appointed will be your fourth sporting director in two years. Mm -hmm. And given that... You know, everyone's brought something a bit different, to be fair. Even George Schmadka, like his links with the Bundesliga has, you know, got you that Sabosla ideal. It saved you out of a sticky hole when Caicedo and Lavia rejected Liverpool, which still seems like an absolute bonkers decision by them. And you signed Wataro Endo. You know, everyone's brought something different, but you do want someone fixed in place for hopefully the next three to five years at least um, and carry through this new, new era. Um, so I think the fact that, if you're, if you're going for Xavi Alonso, I think it is helpful having Stuyton, who's already worked with him, uh, and his work at his work at Bayer Leverkusen, his work at West Ham. He knows how to operate in the transfer market. Uh, he knows how to extract the most value out of deals as well. Like I don't think either of those clubs were known for overpaying for deals, uh, which Liverpool haven't been known for either. Uh, although if that Caicedo deal had gone through, perhaps you would have. Um, although he potentially looked like a completely different player in that Liverpool eleven, anyway. Yeah. Um, but Stuyton, I think, is that is probably the outstanding candidate. It'll just be interesting to see whether you can get him off West Ham. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is the big factor in and amongst all of this, isn't it? And yeah, how how difficult or easy may that be? Um, Dougie, absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so, so much for your expertise. It's been, honestly, it's been an amazing listen. I've learned a lot. Hopefully everybody else has as well. Um, before I let you go, um, socials, where, we, where can we find your work and all that stuff, mate? Perfect. Well, thanks so much for having me on the festival, Dan. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, you can find me on Football Daily. You can find me on Sky Sports News as well. But socials, it's just at Doogie Critchley uh, for Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. Top man. Thank you so much once again. Absolute pleasure. Everybody else, I'll see you all again very soon. Take it easy.